afraid, I afraid to die. How yeah. about that? Yeah. Well, then I was like, I know, start living more. So like I started enjoying going to the grocery store with my wife. I started picking things that you normally would take for granted as everyday events and I made them huge. All right guys, yellow colored glasses. Uh, episode 82. I got Michael Medley on. Um, excited about this one. This will be a little bit different than what we've done before. Um, we've kind of talked about this in the past, um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited for this one. But before we get started, you guys, we are going to read a review. So I picked this review out myself. Um, David C. says, the people here are solid. I've known Jake for several years now and watched an impressive development out of his journey. The agency also services basically all my insurance plans for personal and business. The support and service is great every time. Finding solutions to my needs to balance quality at a fair market value has been accomplished in a variety of ways. The team cares about their clients and is a great partnership they have, or they, they have established. Thank you, David. That is a very nice review. Uh, me and David have known each other for a while and uh, done insurance with each other for about 10 years now. So uh, appreciate the kind words there, my man. Um, okay. What's up, dude? How you doing? Oh, I'm all right. After you that got, good workout. You just got a hell of a freaking workout this morning. It was a good one. I feel like, I don't know, I feel pretty pumped. Yeah, I mean, a good, like a good, heavy, like solid workout where you just kind of push through everything. And you really can't beat it dude, mentally. I like. And I woke up this morning, I already told you this at the gym, like I woke up this morning, it's sunny outside. It's like, I mean, it's Saturday, it's like, it's gonna be like 75 degrees sunny and it's gonna be. This morning, like, man, my favorite ones were like this, I had to drag myself. And like, I didn't want to go, but mm -hmm. it's like, when you get that momentum, oh, yeah. you're warmed up, you're midway through your first lift, you're like, I'm kind of, and, and I, by the end of it, you're like, man, I would have hated yep. myself if I didn't come. If you didn't come, yeah. and then it's even that more beneficial, or that more like, before yeah. because you've made it there and then you actually had a good workout. Putting your body through adversity. Yep. All right, um, so today, you guys, we're gonna talk about men's mental health. Um, this is gonna be a really cool episode, um, but let's do our peak in our pit first, because mm -hmm. um, that'll kind of go into everything that we're wanting to talk about. Um, so a peak. Um, so what is something gr really good that I am feeling great about right now? Honestly, dude, I'm gonna go with my workout this morning. This whole morning has been really good for me. I'm a big morning routine guy. I woke up, I had a good smoothie, got to the gym, felt really good. My back hasn't been messing with me, or has been messing with me, and uh, so today was probably my best workout I've had in a, in a probably about a month, so. Yeah, I'd have to say probably overall my peak would be just consistency over the, the first part of this, this year. This year? Like, okay. you know, I was very inconsistent coming in, you know, to the end mm -hmm. of the year, and uh, that's a, I think it's a struggle everybody has. You get yeah. burnt out when you lift so much, and I just kind of got to where, you know, I was skipping. I was like, oh, I'll go tomorrow. And then you don't yep. go tomorrow. And I just, you know, kind since the beginning of the year, of... it's been very, very consistent. No, dude, that's, that's, I was the same way. Cause I feel like, like, like with uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, like we just get so busy and like, it's so easy to get off that routine. And dude, there's nothing that drives me nuts was not having a good routine. And you know, I was in the same boat. Yeah. You're not sleeping as much. You're mm -hmm. eating worse food than like you normally would eat. You're just kind of on the run. Yep. You know, everything's just... You know, you're like, well, I can't go to the gym because I got Christmas at mom's or whatever, you know, or yep. you can't do this or that. So it's almost sacrificing self-care for, yeah. <laughs> for, for everybody else. Know, yeah, yeah, dude. And it sucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good one. Um, okay, a pit. So I would say my pit, and actually to go back on my peak, um, another cool thing, which I haven't got to tell you yet, like we got a couple people hired on Warren Mounts um, here recently. So they're going to start in March. So I'm, that's that's been a... I don't know. That's really exciting for me. Um, it gets me. It just kind of lights a fire under me again to to get back into work and and which I'm not saying I'm not working, but um, just to get back on track. And it's just another excitement with the culture. So really excited about that. Um, but a pit that goes into. So I'll talk about two things here. A pit is whenever you do hire people, you got all this damn paperwork. Mm -hmm. And dude, I filled out applications yesterday for a bunch of different stuff, and I just that stuff sucks. Um, so the pit is we got new people on, so uh, more paperwork, but uh, it's also a good thing. And then the other pit is my sciatic nerve has been really jacking with me. And I tweaked it uh, last week, and well, about 10 days ago, and it's finally, today was good. 
But dude, it put me down for about two or three days, and I just, it, I don't know. I got to get more. I got to get more active with my move, my motions, and and stretching and things like that. So, that would probably be kind of to piggyback off that would be kind of a pit for me. Mm-hmm. Even though I've had the consistency, mm-hmm. I seem to be getting mild dumb injuries a yep. lot more. And uh, I'm really having to focus, especially on these last two weeks of warming up. I've been trying to stretch more, just, you know, drinking more water. You kind of just, you try to jump in and brute every workout and you just can't. Well, and we're getting older. Like, I don't like blaming age because I think that that age is almost like a myth with with certain things. But, I mean, it is is real. Like, you can't, you're not 20 years old. So there's little extra protocols we probably should have to do, which is probably kind of stuff that we're going to talk about today, too. So, um, okay, cool. So let's just jump into this, man. Um, so kind of how this has all kind of came about is, you know, me and you talked about doing a podcast mm-hmm. one time and then um, just hadn't got it on the calendar. And then one day you reached out or we were talking and, and we were like, you know, or you were like, let's talk about mental men's mental health. Um, I think that's is men's mental health is what, in June? Yeah, like it's men's month. mental health month is in June. It's always been a huge deal for me. Just okay. kind of like um, I've had quite a few family members who have just they've suffered to the point of you know suicide or just drug abuse what and it all starts with just not talking about the fact that you may be struggling with some stuff and it's just you know i'd like to break the stigma that you could Mm -hmm. be tough and still you know hey man i'm going through some stuff you don't have to put it on facebook but just reaching out to a buddy and being like what do you think i should do or does this sound normal you know this this or that you know yeah. reaching out to your wife's a big one too you know a lot yeah. of husbands won't talk to their wives yeah you know no and i i i think that is a that's a big deal because you know like so the question is is what does mental health mean to you right mm-hmm. like what does that mean to us um like you said i mean like you see highlight reels with mm-hmm. with social media right now Social media is, a, I think, a great thing because of the awareness that it, you can get, but it can also be the exact opposite too. Because people, like you just said, when you're looking at social media, you're seeing highlight reels yeah, that's of all everybody's that's life, yeah. right? Yeah. They're not putting it out there because you don't want to put the bad out there, you know? It's not natural, it's not normal. Um, because you do, we all talk, like we all want to look like, when, when yeah. I ask you how you're doing, you want to say, I'm good, man. Yeah. I'm yeah. doing great. But yeah. how are you actually doing? And that's right? that's the, you know, that's another just to kind of, they just don't talk about their mental health enough. Yep. Period. It's And you know what I say? Enough, just not at all. Mm-hmm. And that's the... Just the overall, like I said, just the biggest problem with the, I think the whole episode's about. I'd like to open it up to where you could, and it's just not so much of a struggle to do it. And for me, like with my, you know, my mental health, the big one was reaching out to my wife. Yeah. And like, I was so worried about, you know, you're supposed to be the husband, the tough guy that, you know, I run the head of the household, the whole deal. Yep. And for me, that was a huge deal. Mm-hmm. And I even told her, I was like, this is very vulnerable for me. You know, I don't talk to people about these problems. And I'm telling you right now, had I not have done that, I wouldn't have made the strides I've made yeah. over the past year. I mean, that's it. Your, your significant other is, when it comes time, is your best support yep. system you'll ever have. And the sooner I think people realize that, because mm-hmm. I, I can't agree with that enough. Yeah. I'm only as strong as, I mean, you have to think about it. You know your spouse is i mean that's your partner right yeah. like from a from a, 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 a of course a marriage standpoint whatever that is but but to go what is a partner you know like dude best friends right we're, we're we, i have her back she has my back like you got to have each other's backs and vulnerability you know you got to be vulnerable and that's hard to do i think for both people because you don't want to act like you know you're bringing a problem to a relationship mm-hmm. right but Life is not perfect, man. And there's going to be your ups and downs. And I feel like you got to have people in your corner to help you get through those times. Mm. So I guess that's that's cool on your guys' end. So how long ago was that? Like how long, I mean, how long have you been, uh, have you gone was, through this? Like, I guess, yeah, what does that look like it, for you? It's about 14 months now. Um, and I will say it was a year before I was even started having, you know, just stuff going on mentally that I just wasn't really understanding, you know, we'll get into what caused that later on. But 
I just reaching out to her and just to go back off of why it worked for us was uh, we look at marriage the same way you just did. Mm -hmm. It's a 50 50 partnership, man. Like it's no more than the next. Correct. If we can't agree on something, we're arguing, we'll set it off to the side. We'll revisit it later when we can cool down and talk about it. Yep. So opening up for me was easy because we always have done everything together. And I could see where that would be a problem for some people if it was a you know 70-30 relationship right. or 90 10, whatever. It's gonna be hard when somebody yep. controls most of the stuff. So. Yep. No, and I think that's that's the thing that I like the most about like me and Michaela's relationship. You know, it, it is it's not just my way or the highway. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like or her way or the highway. Like we have conversations. And we, we kind of talked about this a little bit before, but like me and her talked about, you know, bringing value right to, mm. to every relationship and and you know i need i want her to open up to me and i want i want to be able to open up to her um where i can help her and vice versa like mm. we need to help each other and that's what that's what this that's what your spouse is there for is help and just like a best like just like a good friend right like yeah. if i want to be a good friend i want to bring some kind of value to our relationship right where yeah. i'm not just coming to you with all of these things sucking all the energy out of you like mm. it has to be a mutual thing and sometimes we don't even talk about that. We don't talk about the mutual relationship with, again, we always talk, I mean, if it's a spouse, friendship, or a, a friendship, a, you know, a son, you know, a, a, whatever that is, like we have all these different roles, a leader. Um, so I think opening up and, and being able to basically have a mutual conversation is, is a very big benefit. And, my life. you know, that just to kind of go off the question of one's, what's mental, mental health mean to me is I think opening up, to her made me, you know, my, my mental health being the best it could be made me a better husband, you yep. know, more attentive, a better father. Better I'm happier overall. I'm, I got more of a hustle to me. Everything's just, everything started to get better as my mental health started to rise. So mm -hmm. yeah, at one point you may think in your head, you bottling it up and being tough is the right way to do it. No, man, it makes you look weak because your whole family's suffering. You come home, yep. you got your head down, you know, you're like, ah, it was just another day at the, you yep. know, whatever but you will be a better man overall yeah. when you really sift through what you're working on, you know, mentally. No, I love that. Um, so I guess like, I mean, what, like, how do you, like how, how did you go about just basically getting it out in the open? So you know, for me, it was starting a, that conversation. For me, it was a, just kind of a, an accumulation of things. I was just waking up just depressed for no reason okay. like I didn't have a re and I kept telling myself that just the classic it's a mindset you know it's all up here I just keep telling myself good days good vibes and it wasn't working and I'm like maybe I'm just in a slump well then I started to like really lose it at the gym and I wasn't missing or my consistency wasn't changing I was just losing it and then it got to the point where it just got dark. Like I didn't want to be around my son. I didn't want to be around my wife. Oh, you know, okay. just I wanted to be secluded in my room or in the shop. I wasn't talking to any friends. You can go through all my list of friends for over a year. I wasn't answering the phone. And then it got to the point where it was just, I started to tiptoe on very, you know, suicidal. And then that, at that point I was like, I got to, you know. So what I, year was this? Like how long ago was this? This like would have been 2000 and. 21 okay. was when it really really kind of started it started slow 2022 it was really taken off and i could start telling that it went mentally and then it went physically like i was completely you know depleted i i had no energy just a color in my face i just nothing seemed right hmm. okay. you know just i was sore all the time you know there was just a lot of stuff body wise and again you know going into sure. the cause of that but interesting um so I mean, what'd you do? Like, what, like, so you went through that time, um, and then it sounds like you talked to your wife yeah, first. That was I didn't first. talk. I actually, I did not talk to my wife first. Okay. I tried to, I tried to power through it. Okay. You know, I tried to lift more. I was like, maybe I need another hobby. Maybe I need, you know, this or that. Okay. And I tried. It didn't work. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go to the doctor. And for a year, it was antidepressants. That's all it was. It was just, that's, that's the first thing they said. You need to go see a therapist and antidepressants. And for some reason, I just didn't feel like that was so the case. So you didn't do that? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Okay. And, and I get nothing against anybody that yeah. does. It's just for me, I've read the side effects on how bad it is to come off of right. those if I decided to quit. And that just wasn't a uh, decision see, I was ready here, to make. Here, this, I want to stop on that because yeah. this is going to lead into some other com other things we're going to talk about. One thing that I, I'm a very big believer on or a very – I have a strong opinion on um, with – 
a lot of things that we do in life or a lot of things that are happening in life is that we are putting a band-aid on problems, mm -hmm. right? We're not we're not figuring out what the actual what where the problem actually is, mm -hmm. right? If something happens, if we're feeling down, what do we do? Antidepressant, mm -hmm. right? What does that do? Does that solve the problem or does that fix does that basically fix fix it the just uh, the short, masks it exactly for the mask moment. it and it's it's deficiencies it's all these different things and I think there's a lot of things that we can do you know as humans to actually solve the problem versus again putting a bandaid on it mm -hmm. and I think uh, that's going to go really into a lot of things we're going to talk about with maybe even the mental you know the the the, the mental side of things I think a lot of the medicine is just overall society's instant gratification right. nobody wants to put in the work that may take six months a year they want six something years. right now they want to feel good today and right. i get that I, yep. I don't blame you yep. but the longevity is not it's not there. sustainable i would rather put in a work for a year two years and be good for 30 mm -hmm. than just take medicine for 10 as soon as i'm off of it i'm back where i was 10 exactly. years ago there's just what you're was not the, fix the problem yeah what was the so, point okay so we didn't do that uh go on though so it was just I tried the medicine, or I, I tr they told me the medicine, I didn't try it, I just, I wasn't a fan. The therapy thing, I wanted to reach out to people I already knew. I have people in my corner that are just, you know, I've still got some good buddies that they tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. So I figured I'm going to reach out to them, and I did, and, you know, kind of talk with them first, and even they were like, man, if, you know, if it's not, if you're going to the doctor and they're saying medicine, like maybe you should, and I kind of went back and forth with that, and then I tried some natural stuff, like being more active. You know, I tried running. They said that was a big deal, just kind of up your system, and just nothing was working, okay. absolutely nothing. And finally, I just got to the point where I was like, it was getting to the point where it was affecting my marriage, and it was affecting my relationship with my son. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd come home, and it wasn't, you know, running to dad anymore because, you know, that normally was, he'd run. I'm like, what's up, man? And I'd walk off, you know. And it's sad to think about that now, but that's that's what yeah. it was. And finally, I just, I could see my whole world around me was just as bad as the way it was inside my head. And I was like, that's where I, you know, I just told my wife, I was like, I need your help. You, do something. you know, I, when we started reading together and researching and, you know, stuff like that until we. Dude, that's awesome. We came up with our plan that worked, so. That's really cool. Um, and I feel like. Again, dude. I mean, props to you because that's a that that's that's. It's almost like, you know, you you can play like a victim with it, like oh my life is so bad, or you can say okay, hey, here's the actual situation, and I feel like in that scenario with what you just did, with what you just mm -hmm. said, like you you had all these things like where you were you were being selfish, where where you weren't almost opening up, or you, how am I, what am I trying to say here? It's if whenever we're not talking about these things. It's it, all the other people around us are struggling, right? Because then they're thinking, is it, is it them, right? Is your son, is it, is it something your son's doing? Is it something your wife's doing versus it's inside of us? And if we get that out and we can be vulnerable and say, hey, listen, this is my issue. It's not you, Michael, as a, as a friend of me. This is, I'm dealing with this. And then that opens them up where they're not thinking that it's the, yeah. they're on their end. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. And a, another big one for me that I think a lot, and I think people in general struggle with this yes. is admitting that you have a fault yes and just because you have a fault doesn't mean it can't be fixed or whatever worked on it's just that's where the selfishness came from yep. i didn't want to say that there was a problem with me not right. with everything around me it was exactly. me that exactly. was the problem and once i did that it made it better well, you know it's, it's just it's opening like up really thing make off it, your yeah. shoulder you and know. i'm not saying open up like come home every day and throw every problem you have on your wife's shoulders or your friends' shoulders. Right. You know, you need to be able to deal with life on your own. Right. But when it gets to the point where your back's against the wall and you got to reach, mm -hmm. reach. Well, and being intentional with that conversation. Yeah. Right? Like, there's a difference between venting, right? Yes. And, and having an intentional conversation where it's like, hey, I need to talk to you. This is some things that I'm dealing with. Um, so how did that go, I guess? Like... Like, what was the moment where, so you said you did talk to your wife first? I, did, you, I, I, I talked to my wife last. She okay. was the last. That Who was did you my, talk to first then? Uh, David Peffer. Okay. was the first guy I probably called and was like, you know, and then my buddy Rhett Bramer was the same way. You know, Rhett, I reach out to quite a bit. You know, we bounce back and forth off of if I'm having a good day, bad day, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, they were kind of through that whole process talking to them. But it was another thing, you know, you're talking to guys that are, could possibly be dealing you know we're all dealing with mm -hmm. a lot of similar stuff mm -hmm. 
So, um, but reaching out to my wife was the most beneficial for me. And, you know, to, to talk about that, there's going to be a lot of guys that'll do that. You know, they might hear this and they may go do that. Another big thing is, is when you come up with a plan, you have to follow it. If you're going to reach out and you're going to, you're going to, your wife's going to give you her time to make sure we're going to come up with a plan. I'm going to be involved. And then you just, you shut her out. You don't tell her what's going on or you're not doing what you're supposed to do. It, the, it's got to be a, you know, you've got to do the work to get better, you know. That's, yeah, you got to take like like if there's a plan in place, like you got to stick to the plan. You got to have an account. Like I'm assuming like an accountability, accountability and that's what a lot of people I think struggle with in the beginning. You know, you see it with fitness all the time. Mm-hmm. New year, new me lasts for thirty days, yep. and then it's over. And that's you know that's fine. Yeah. But it's it's got to be that if you're going to so have a plan. How do you do that? Like because like that is hard. Like you can sit here and say like or we can sit here and say like you know we have all these different routines. I, sh- I like, struggled for the first six months. Yeah. I mean, and that's the other thing. It's like whenever, you know, this is a, I've dealt with a lot of, you know, struggles with addiction and family that's had that. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks that you're going to cold turkey do anything and you're just not. Like when you start, even in fitness, when you start, you you might go for two weeks, you know, five days straight. But Mm -hmm. there's going to be a week where you're going to skip two or three days. And when you start getting down on yourself and beating yourself up, Mm -hmm. you just quit. You know, most people are like, all right, man, I'm not going, so whatever. But if you're just like, okay. I normally don't go on Saturdays, but I skip Wednesday and Thursday. I'm going to go Saturday and Sunday, and I'll pick it back up next week. I just kept telling myself that, you know, I can't. we got to stay consistent. And did it just you, and fell she, Did place. she, did wife help you with that? Um, like holding, like, you know, It asking, wasn't so much hold me accountable. It was reminding me, like, I'd be on my way home from work, and those were the times where I'd skip the gym. I'd, I'd, have, I'd be psyched up all day, and then that drive home, you know, because my house is only a quarter mile from the gym, so okay. it's, it's hard to... I want to go home instead of go there. Right. She would call me right after work, and she'd be like, "Oh, I'm going to do this, this, and this. You're going to the gym, right?" And just and that stuck at my head. Well, now what? I can't go home because she's because she's know, already you know, at your word. We've already talked about it, so now I got. And then every time, so going to the gym that that was a big deal for you. That was a huge forcing myself just to get back. You know, maybe not so much heavy lifting. You know, back into what I'm trying to do now, mm-hmm. but just going walking on the treadmill, being in the atmosphere putting my phone down, just talking to people. Cause you know, you can piggyback off of anybody's, you know, success in the gym. Correct. You know, I get psyched, you know, somebody's PRs, if it was 75 one week, it's 85 this week. I get just as psyched as they do. Yeah. You know, it's just a yeah. dopamine high for me seeing people happy. Yeah. No. And that's a, that's a, I think, I think I've read it or I saw a stat one time where, you know, cause that, that's, and that goes back into, uh, you know, the medications and, 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 and band-aids and things like that. Like we are all looking for a mm-hmm. short term, you know, short, short term feeling, you mm-hmm. know, a dopamine hit right off the bat. Like that's mm-hmm. where addiction comes into play is, you know, you're looking for that, that feeling. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, if you don't get it, then it's, then that's, that's where, you know, then it just, you're chasing. It's always like, you're always chasing that, that yeah. hit. And one thing about the gym, they say that that is one of the biggest natural dopamine things that you can or do to to have those receptors like release those feel Mm -hmm. good feelings in your body is getting a good workout putting yourself through some sort of physical yeah it's it's any adversity and and you anything you read about that's why fasting works so good that's why cold plunges that's why the sauna it's because you're putting your body in extreme adversity and when it overcomes it it's stronger for it feels it's it's euphoric so yeah it's like if you go to the gym and you know you're struggling you make it all the way through your workout Mm -hmm. at the end of it you may it may suck but by the time i make it to my car and turn the key you're feeling you're smart that's right there's not a day like when we left the gym today, I mean, we we're just both smart. I mean, yeah. I, I yeah, thought we both had good workouts. Yeah. Like, it, it is, it is a. So yes, so I, I feel like we're gonna get off track on that, but yes, I feel mm-hmm. like um, that's a big deal, you mm-hmm. know. And I feel like yeah. work, and that that also goes into you working on yourself. Yes. Right. Well, because when you, it, it kind of just all falls like a domino effect. Mm-hmm. Once you get past that, I gotta go in there, and then you get in there. And then you're like, okay, I'm here. You go for a couple weeks, you're walking on the treadmill, you're doing little stuff, whatever. And then you kind of start lifting and it's mm-hmm. kind of getting easier and you're paying attention and you're learning. If you're willing to put in the work, mm-hmm. you know, this isn't, if you're going to go in there and be lazy, it's not going right. to do it. But overall, it was seeing every little triumph, you know, and then where it really starts boosting it is when you're physically seeing changes. Yes. Then you're like, okay, now I get it. You know, because a lot mm-hmm. of people, they'll be like, I don't get it. Because I didn't either. I used to make fun of guys who went to the gym every all the time. I'm like, what's the point? You know, but now I'm like, man, when it's, you put yourself through quote unquote war and you're out of it, you know, you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. This is great. 
Okay, so the gym. So you talked to your wife. Um, that was a big deal. And then the gym. What else did you do? Appreciating the the biggest, I think, overall that I just kind of thought about was appreciating little things in life. I started waking up every morning before work and on the weekends, and I watched every sunset for like a year straight. Never missed them. Don't care if it was raining cold. I did it with my dog. Me and my dog would go outside. I'd put my music on. I'd watch the sunset. I'd go out. I bought a hammock. I'd go out and I'd, you know, in the middle of my yard and I'd just, no phone. I'd just listen because, you know, everybody is, you know, afraid, afraid to die. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Well, then I was like, I know, start living more. So, like, I started enjoying going to the grocery store with my wife. I started picking things that you normally would take for granted as everyday events, and I made them huge. I was like, this is awesome, man. Everything. Going, That's, like, really good. Yeah, my son swim me today. You know, he jumped off the diving board, was waving, was, and I'm like, what is better than right now? You know, and that was a huge deal. Like when you go home today, mm -hmm. roll your windows down, leave your radio shut off, drive through town and think about when we were 16 driving through mm -hmm. town. You'll be the happiest you've been all week by the time you get to your house. Yeah. Just enjoying that's a stuff really that's good, free. That's a great, I love that actually. Mm -hmm. Because the grocery store, uh, getting gas, you know, doing all these things that we do so much, it is an, inc we, we always think it's an inconvenience or it's, it's a pain in the ass for us to do. And if you can sit there and say, you know what, I'm capable, I'm able to go to wake up today and go to the gym or, mm -hmm. you know, or go to the store or go do this. I have a vehicle to drive to get to this spot. Mm -hmm. For and, and That's a very good point. I love that. It was and it was a struggle, too, because like I was like, I'm going to sure. I'm going to have to get psyched up to go weedy. You know, but how I had to do it was, you know, like going to the store. No guy wants to go to the grocery store. No, I don't care. Pain. Nobody really no, wants to. I, I but I had to look at it like this. We drove to the grocery store in a brand new truck. Yeah. Nobody else can do. No, there's a lot of people that don't even have a car. We're going to the grocery store and filling our cart up with stuff we want and need. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, we've done well enough to do that. You know, like you say, uh, you know, you, I don't want to weed eat. There's people that can't walk, mm -hmm. so I'm walking yeah. and weed eating and healthy and whatever. I just had to appreciate every. And I, you know what? Because of that, I feel like I live longer. My days feel longer, and I get more out of them because when you turn stuff you don't like. It turns into monotony. So then you just breeze through it. How many times have you drove to work, got to work, and been like, I don't remember driving here. Mm -hmm. How many times you went to the grocery done that? Went through the whole grocery store playing on your phone, don't even realize you left. It's once you Being start. Being present in life. And yeah. that's where I think that made a huge jump just overall appreciating, trying to appreciate everything. And you won't do it all the time. No, not at all. There's but no way. try that's the big deal. And, and that's the thing. I think that, uh, what you just said as well, I think that's a big thing um, because when you, when you have that kind of mindset and if, you, if it's not like that, you can't beat yourself up that, you know, just because I, I went to the store yesterday and I wasn't excited to go or whatever, like it's okay, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Give, yourself, like, give yeah. yourself some wiggle room to not be perfect because I think that's also the thing is like we are so – people do not like being beginners, no. right we, we want to be an expert in all the things that we want to do right mm -hmm. and when we are a beginner we feel it, it's like a it's like an ego hit you know and so taking ego things out of out of things in life and and just basically accepting that it's okay to be a beginner in my opinion and being a beginner with you being vulnerable you opening up um, and acknowledging that and not being selfish to know like okay hey I need help and I think that's what you did, for like. yeah and then you know you going off of being a beginner that was kind of another thing where i was like i had to look at it that positive you know you want to be you want to be an expert you don't want to be a beginner nobody wants to be the you know the guy fumbling around trying to figure out Correct. what's going on and i went through that until mm -hmm. i started looking at it like i looked at everything else this just gives me a chance to learn more yep and i can make as many mistakes as i want because everybody knows i don't know what i'm doing right mm -hmm. now but i'm going to keep going you have to try to pull the yep. positive or you'll go crazy. And I think, I think where, where this also goes into, into effect is like whenever, whenever we're young, right? Mm -hmm. what do, what do we, we're young. We're learning all kinds of stuff. We're, we're, I mean, that's all we're doing as, a ch as, as kids is mm -hmm. learning. So then when we become an adult, right, mm -hmm. we're not learning as much. We go into our work. We do these things. We, we're, we go into a, these routines where we're not challenging ourselves. We're not doing certain things that we did growing up. And I think that's where that's a big part of uh, of mental mental health in general is just not 
keeping yourself fresh with learning new things. The drop in men's mental health will start late 20s and early 30s. Okay. It gets the worst midway you know, through, statistically. Okay. And then once you get past that, once it goes, the older you get, the worse it gets. And I believe it's because of that. When you, because of the, when you stop learning yep. and you go dormant in your head, mm -hmm. life doesn't, it's not fun anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, like I get made fun of because I have 5,000 hobbies, but I'm always like learning something or wanting to know. And I may not know, I know a little bit about a lot and it just keeps mm -hmm. my mind going. I'm, I never have to stop learning mm -hmm. about stuff I enjoy. Yeah. But I think that's where you see guys, will, they'll get bored. And then they won't have anything to fill it. And then they're like, well, I don't want to, you know, not, I don't want to go to the gym and, or go do this and be the guy that doesn't know anything. So then they just never try. Then the next thing you know, you're 40 and you're like, well, what am I doing? What is the meaning to my life? Am I just raising these kids and after that just paying taxes and dying? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's no, a dude, big that's a problem. great point. It, that's a, and I, I, I've caught myself personally being in a spot where it's like, okay, once I get to this, once I get to, to this level, right? And, and whatever that might be in like a relationship with business, with whatever, you know, gym wise, like I'm going to feel good at that spot when I get mm -hmm. there. Right. Mm -hmm. But once you get there, then you're like, it's kind of like what you said with driving to work. You don't even remember how you even got there. Now you're there and you don't even present, you don't even know that you're even there yet. Right. Cause you're, you're sitting there thinking, well, now I just, if I can get to this spot, that's when I'm going to feel better at that time. Ooh. And I have caught myself personally chasing that that five years down the road, two years down the road, whatever that whatever that is. But the times where I could sit here and say, you know what, let's make today really good. Mm -hmm. That's that's the most fun, and I the energy that you get with just that is. You know, I don't know nothing about what you do selling mm -hmm. insurance, mm -hmm. but just think about it like. The very first time right. you got your first customer, do right. you remember what the, you probably don't remember what that felt like? That's what you. That's what I would want to. If I was in your shoes, mm -hmm. if I sold twenty policies a week, I don't know what yeah, it is. Yeah. If I did that, I would want to do my best to feel that excitement out of fifteen of them. You know, you're not going to do twenty, but I would do my best yeah. to make everyone like, yeah, yeah, man. And that's it. And like that goes back into like the little things. Yeah, it's it's the very little things like taking those small wins mm -hmm. and celebrating them, right? Because we're always trying to celebrate something huge, some kind of huge win, and that's not what life is about. Life is about the process and or about enjoying the process, mm -hmm. right? About enjoying going through life versus just trying to get to one next level, right? And that's what I think sometimes people do is they they're always looking at what the next like ah oh, once this happens mm -hmm. right and then they're not they're not having that happiness until that happens and i think as as high as you get will be as low as you get right so if you're always looking for that super high you're going to live a roller coaster of your life i i i think a lot of what we're seeing now especially with with men's mental health you know just off of this you know mm -hmm. enjoying the little things it's we've been taught our whole life it's the product. Mm -hmm. You work really hard. You get a good retirement. You yep. get insurance. You buy your house. You have your kids. It's the product we've been taught. Yep. Nobody has ever told us to enjoy the process mm -hmm. to get there. And that's something I think is really missing. Like, hey, man, when you're young and you're hustling, that's the youngest you're – today is the youngest you will ever be. Literally. So why not, I don't want to look back at 60 and be like, you know, man, I wish I didn't work so much and I wasn't so in a bad mood all the yep. time and, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, dude, that's a good point. And I, I love that. That's very refreshing to hear mm -hmm. um, because honest, and honestly, man, we, we don't really, I mean, we've known each other, but we've never really ever hung out. Like, I mean, right. Have, I mean, I mean, we were kids. You got to think though, I was just thinking about that on the way over here. I met Nick Smith when I was 12. Uh -huh. Okay. And then right after that, I met Boehner. Okay. And then right after that, I met Vince, and then Dash, uh -huh. and then you, uh -huh. and then Anthony Bricker. Bro, I'm 32. That it's was 20 years ago. You know, it's I mean, weird. You don't think about stuff like that until yep. you're like, I've known these people for A long the time. bulk of my life mm -hmm. at this point. You yep. know, because when you're 10, 12, you've known somebody for a year that doesn't, you don't put it into perspective. Well, you don't, like even that. at that time, like, and, and that also goes into like mental health in general. Like, you know, you, you know the feelings that we have as, as kids growing up. You know, if you have that, if you're really nervous, mm -hmm. you don't even know what that is. You have butterflies in your stomach, right? You, you don't have a, you know, anxiety. You don't have all these different things because you don't know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a natural feeling, right? And then I think you can start actually basically 
pinpointing those certain things like as we get older to know okay that feeling that i'm feeling right now mm -hmm. that's that is anxiety that is depression that is us feeling down like that's so anyways i don't know where i was going with that but um yeah it's anyways with me and you like i feel like we haven't even i mean we've known each other for a very long time but it's not something like we have these conversations all the time no and that's something that like you know should be another thing guys talk mm -hmm. you know if you have guys that you've known for mm -hmm. 20 years but you just don't talk to them all the yep. time reach out man because they've known you for 20 years Correct. like they're probably going to yep. be the ones that are going to be the most receptive well and that's the thing i guess that's where i was going sorry is us like it's refreshing on my end to hear because a lot of the things that you've said which you we haven't ever really talked about is a lot of the i agree with mm -hmm. so much of that and i try we there's me and michaela talk about these things a lot and you know there's not a lot of guys out there that in my opinion, that even try to live like that. And, and, and I don't think they just know, I don't think they know how to. Like, I don't think they, they, they don't have that support system, I feel like. And I think that's where this is about is, you know, when you can get to that spot, man, living is, I mean, it's it, fun. It, there's, <laughs> it can be fun. That tough guy stuff, you know, there's a reason. Men make up 50% of the population and 80% of the suicide rate. So that'll tell you where that tough guy stuff takes you. Cause, and that, I, that's the harshest way I can, you know, yeah. I, w I would like to give it is I, all those men were tough until they weren't. And all they had to do was look one way and they could have figured it out. You know, it was, and it's easy to say if you've never been in their shoes and it's been that dark for you, you don't know what that's like. Mm -hmm. But if you have and you have reached out, you know that, hey, man, if I wouldn't have done that, it went the other way. Yeah. It went the other way quick. Yeah. So the numbers will tell you that it, it, it works out a lot better just to yeah. be yourself and talk about what you're going on. No, dude, that's awesome. I love that. Um, okay, so we've talked about a little bit about mental health in general, something you've struggled with, um, how you've overcome these struggles. Um, yeah, I mean, how, so you've, gone, you've talked to your wife, gone to the gym. What else? What else has uh, been, been beneficial for you? So for me, it was getting my hormones levels checked. That's what overall was the big, and like, you know, that was not something that you talk about at 30, you know, at 30, 31, you know, and a lot of your regular doctors won't talk about it. They won't even test you. They won't even, you know, whatever your levels are, they'll be like, you're just not eating the right stuff. You know, you're sitting on the couch too much, whatever that is. But uh, that was overall, when I went and got my levels checked and they came back and they were like, all right, man, you're supposed to be around 650, you're at 216. And that's when you're talking about levels, so you're, you're talking about testosterone my levels. My testosterone so, levels. So I think um, that's a big thing in, in men and women is, is hormones, um, you know, making sure. Because like, and again, I think, it, I think there's other, other, the root of the problem is, is goes deeper than, than, you know, I mean, I think it goes into like our, our diets, right, just in general. But it also goes into the type of food, all the processed food, all the things that we're seeing. And I'm not super big hippie where I'm like all or you know, natural. I try organic. to eat the best I can. That's what I tell Correct. people. But I'm, I'm telling you, if I'm hungry and there's a Burger King, Correct. I'm going to stop and eat exactly. a Burger King. You know what I mean? So, yeah. the, But there are those type of things that I think is actually is the actual root to this problem. Mm -hmm. But there are solutions to help with the deficiencies that we're not getting. And I feel like that's where hormone, making sure testosterone numbers are, are at the right spot because I think that all fuels into mental health in yeah. general and how we feel on a day-to-day -day basis. So for me, you know... It was nobody wants to, you know, it, whenever you go in and a doctor looks at you, you're like, your body doesn't produce testosterone. Mm -hmm. As a man hearing that, you're like, well, what is the point then? That's what I told myself. I'm like, so what am I doing here? You know, you're blaming yourself. You're like, what's going on? And that's what makes us as a man. Yeah. It's literally testosterone. Yeah. That's the separates you from a man and a woman. And if you don't have that testosterone, you there's so many things that go that, that are negative with that. So I, 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 I talked to the doctor and I was like, okay, man, what are my options? Mm -hmm. what, cause, cause at this point, and I want to stress this before, you know, I tried everything before we got to this point. Mm -hmm. I was a natural lifter all the way up until I got to this mm -hmm. point. So I'm not saying this is something you jump to, but no, if you have struggled for a long time and you're hitting brick walls everywhere you go, that's where I would go next. So for me, I talked about my options and the doctor said, well, hey man, you don't have to have it. You just don't, mm -hmm. but you're gonna lose your identity completely. Everything that you feel, you know, even now is mm -hmm. just, it's gonna, that's, 
your testosterone controls everything. When your test levels are right, you're the happiest. Your body is the most optimal it can be. Your joints feel the best. Your muscles feel the best. Everything about me is overall better. I'm the I'm a better man today than I've ever been in my life. This is a version of me I don't even think it would have existed. Well, to but be it, honest. and I don't, I don't. Also, it's not just because of the TRT. It's, True. It's there, it's because of your other habits yes, that you're doing yeah. that you're putting in place. But I think they've both. They, they both and, fuel and each other. I think that's, you know, just a, yeah, I, I definitely butchered that a little bit. Um, a lot of guys won't even go look at TRT because mm-hmm. they're like, well, I don't want people to tell me I'm cheating. Okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. You can get a shot all day long, but if you're not eating right, you're not going to the gym, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get heart problems and you're going to swell up. That's all you're going to get. You're going to uh, retain it's, water. It's And I, I also, I want to I want to make it known, like, TRT is not just for guys going to the gym just to get big yeah, and, no. and jacked. It's literally about longevity mm-hmm. and living a good life. That's all. That's that's all it is. I and that's what I've tried to tell people. Like whenever you say TRT, a lot of people don't know what it is. No. So you have to basically you gotta be like, man, it's juice. I don't. Mm-hmm. You know what it is. It's mm-hmm. just. But for me, that's the, been the hardest thing to explain to people. I have to take it to be where I should be regular. Correct. Like just for me to be an optimal man. Yep. You know, that's what I have to do. And I wish I did. When they told me I was going to have to do it forever, I was like, man, I wish there was. You always want to be as natural as you can be of a human, yep. in my opinion. So with TRT, so if anybody has that's listening, you know, if you're not familiar with it, you know, as a man, you know, with testosterone levels, um, you know, they should be in, in the four to 700 range, mm-hmm. I would say, right? What, what they, you, they say, when they told me, they said it was 450 to 750 was okay. where they was wanted. An average. Was, was, and they say 750 and up is pretty high, and they yep. don't, you know, that's where they wanted everybody to be in, you know, in their 30s is up Correct. around there. But, uh, yeah, when they came in, my like I said, mine was so low. Mm-hmm. That doctor looked at me, and he goes, man, I'm going to tell you right now. He's like, all the problems that you're feeling – physically Mm -hmm. and you know mentally they're going to start to uncloud as we get your levels back now like you said i still have to go to the gym you still have to eat right it's not a magic pill and even if you don't go to the gym this is like you said you don't have to go to the gym but it will make you still have to be more active you got to get off the couch go outside play with your kids you know but that's that that feeds into everything because it's not just a it's there's there's not just one thing that fixes all of these issues right It's, it's 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 a it's 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 a daily routine, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's where this is great to tie this all in because you know you can you know a lot of people are looking for that you know I'm going to get TRT to fix all my problems. It's not going to be the case. But when you can when you can combine all of the things that we're that you're talking mm-hmm. about together, that's when it all hits. And it's it is once you get to that spot, it it's like holy shit, man! This is a this is a life worth living, and you get excited about waking up every morning. Yeah, and and like I said, for me, it's it's even noticeable outwards everywhere. Like my my, my company, you know, mm-hmm. my boss said, you just yeah. overall better mood. My wife notices, my kid, all my friends. It's just overall, I'm just better. And like I said, there's a lot of guys that may be going through stuff that when they get to that point and they go test, your levels may be fine. That's not that doesn't give you a reason to stop your search. But I'm saying that. That's a good place to stop cool. that no doctors are pushing. Yep. And in my opinion, I don't want to get on a tangent, but it's because they can't push medicine if you're naturally the way you should be in the first place. Yeah, that's a – yeah, I don't want to get on that. Yeah. Like, that's, that's a whole uh, another conversation, which I could really go down a hole there. <laughs> um, and that's where, like, the whole Band-Aid thing is, like, you know, there – yeah. So, um, okay, so that's good. So, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, if anybody's listening to this, like, you know, testosterone replacement therapy, right? That's basically what TRT is. There are other options, okay? So it's actually on my end. Uh, we were kind of talking mm-hmm. about this a little bit. So uh, I get my levels checked, or I get my blood work checked every six months, mm-hmm. okay? Um, and I've been doing this for probably three or four years here. And my levels are actually very high, pretty high mm-hmm. for a for 32-year-old. 660 yeah. is that's, where mine, that's up where mine, and that's without nothing. Yep. Now I do... Again, I feel like I've, I've, I'm pretty consistent with, you know, eating, trying to eat good, right? Uh, drinking water, doing, you know, daily activities, like physical activities. Um, so I was very, you know, the doctor was like, you know, this is, a, this is a good number. Like, this is a good number to be at. There are ways to get that number higher mm-hmm. and the, without going the TRT option. And the things that I'm doing is HCG 
um, and then in clomiphene or cl clomid, mm -hmm. um, those are ways to naturally, like that doesn't shut your natural testosterone levels down, right? That's going to basically inc make your body increase more natural levels. Yeah, and you have a total number and you have a free number. Yeah. And they both go hand in hand with each other. And I, I think my, my levels will run around 950 to 1,000, okay? And I feel just the difference between 660 to that, mm -hmm. couple hundred points, you know, two, 300 points, mm -hmm. is a huge deal. And, and I know guys who, you know, everybody knows guys who they, 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 they've, been actually for, juice. Yeah, they've been on yes. it for a minute. And that's where a lot of those guys, when I explained to them when I was going through, they also would kind of push me to go to the doctor mm -hmm. because when they run off their cycle, mm -hmm. as they're going down, the symptoms they had, when they were explained to me, I'm like, I live like that every all day. The time. And I will tell you kind of to backtrack on all my symptoms of what, you know, I was having that led me to go. Yeah, yeah, that's a good check. Yeah. Me and my wife sat down and we kind of went over the whole because I wanted her to understand how I was feeling. So mm -hmm. the doctor, the way he explained it to her is he said, it's going to be the closest thing to a man can have to postpartum. That's your, your levels are all over the place. Your body doesn't know how to regulate your emotions. Cause I mean, I would spike happiness and then drive down to depression all in the same. It was just, yeah. I didn't know what was well, going on. That's the, that's the, as high as you, I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, if you think about anything, drugs and alcohol, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're chasing that high, right. Is again, as high as you will ever get in life, will it be as low as you are? Mm -hmm. Right. That's why like cocaine and like certain dopamine type drugs are so they're so addictive mm -hmm. because you're looking for that high. And the next thing you know, you're at the lowest. And I think that goes into, um, you know, if you take any drugs and alcohol out of it completely, but like hormones and making sure our hormones are there, because if they're all out of whack, you're, it, 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 it is a roller coaster. Yeah. I mean, and like I said, you know, I want to I, I really want to hit this a couple times is. I don't want anybody to go get their levels checked and then get on TRT mm -hmm. and then take it for six, eight weeks, whatever. Right. And then they're like, well, I haven't noticed anything, so I'm going to stop. But all you did was you, you took your pen once a week and then you didn't do anything else. Mm -hmm. and you live life how you always have lived it. Right. I just, that's not going to work. It's a lifestyle. It, it, it is, is a, a whole. You have to make it a lifestyle change. It's yeah. just like a diet, mm -hmm. right? A diet is... What is a diet going to do? A diet is going to make you lose weight or do whatever that goal is for that for that amount of time. The diet, mm -hmm. right? The difference between something short term and, and changing a, your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's where I think you have to basically be on board with. You have to be on board with completely changing that lifestyle and not saying that this is a, a short term thing. This is how you are going to live your life now. Mm -hmm. And the sooner that you get on board with that all the other commissions that you get from that with happiness, being a better husband, being a better, you know, father, son, all these different things, you're going to get from that of the lifestyle, lifestyle change. And, and I like what you said about not having to go. Cause I think a lot of guys also think they're like, okay, well, if I'm doing this now, I have to go to the gym. You no. don't, you just have to do everything else. Try to wake up and have a better day. Right. Talk yourself into it. You know, instead yep. of sitting on the couch, go outside, you know, throw the ball with your kid. Correct. You know, nobody said you had to lift weights, but wake up in the morning, do 10 push-ups before you go to work. Correct. That's all you got to do, right. man. And do something. Yeah. Do something. Um, because, you know, the, the life that we live right now is very easy. Very easy. It is easy. Humans like, are the laziest they've ever been correct. since the beginning of time. We can get DoorDash. We don't have to go to the grocery store anymore. We can keep up with friends and not have to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation or not see each other. And honestly, it kind of pisses. It kind of, I get frustrated with myself because there are so many times where I'm like, oh man, I've had a long week at work. Like, you know. I don't have to reach out and ask and, 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 and try to get in front of my friends. You know, I, I, because I'm, I'm bad about that. You know, I, you'll check on Facebook and you'll be like, okay, so I he's see doing that good. he did this, this, and this. And yep. then you don't call him. Right. But it was like, you know, when we were in high school and you didn't have nothing to do on a Saturday, you called your buddy and we're then you're looking. like, hey, I'm coming over. Then you hung the phone up yes. and you had your conversation when you got there. Correct. You know, now, now we're sitting here texting and all these other things. And, and I'm not, I think there's a, I think there's a benefit of that as mm -hmm. well. But, we need to be as humans. We, we have to challenge ourselves more. We have to we have to hold ourselves accountable to be better friends, spouses, son. I mean, kids. Like everything about that. Like we can be better with that. But it, in the life that we live, it makes it so easy for us to get lazy with those things. And you hit it on the dot a, a little bit earlier with doing the little things. It's the little things, mm -hmm. dude. 
Dude, what we're doing today, this has taken us what an hour here, worked out for an hour, you know, two or three hours out of a out of a out of one day. Mm -hmm. uh, Why don't we do stuff like this more? You know, and that's yeah. I, I have another thing I want to go yeah, into after, go after. One thing that I've actually thought about that I really would like to get into, and I don't know if you're doing anything on this. I think you've actually mentioned this, is having like a group of guys get together where. Um, you know, you, you meet once or, uh, you know, you put it on the counter for once a month or once every other week, whatever that number is. And, and we talk about things like this. Is you that know, something that you're involved in? You know, I'm not so much involved in that, but I have talked about it. And mm -hmm. I've even said something along the lines of, you know, even if it's hard to get everybody together once a month, as busy mm -hmm. as all of us are, mm -hmm. I mean, but I've wanted to do like maybe quarterly, you know, every three months you either meet or go on a guy's trip. And the guy's trip could be, we're going to drive to the lake and we're just going to sit around, cook some steaks, yeah. you know, drink a couple beers and just talk about how the last three months has went for us. Mm -hmm. You know, where are you making it? It don't have to be some everybody standing up and hugging each other deal. No, it's just got to be yeah. a, hey man, you know, how are you doing? This is what I'm doing. This is how I fix my stuff. Maybe mm -hmm. this will help you. Mm -hmm. And then overall just hanging out with... We miss a lot of that camaraderie. Correct. Hanging out with like-minded individuals is a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. um, it fuels me. It like having conversation like this is refreshing because I think also you know life does get lonely whenever you start thinking the way that you're thinking, right? Because if you're if you're the if you think you're the only one, and I think this is another point of the podcast is if you're thinking you're the only one that's struggling with mental mm -hmm. mental health, right? It can be lonely. It's like man, no one understands what I'm going through. You know what? They don't understand because you don't have it opened up to them, right? And the other part of that is it's scary because you're being vulnerable, right? Because you're opening up to somebody that you've never had that conversation with. But when you, when you do, then it's like, oh, wow. Now I have this guy to go to. I have this person to go to. And the more people we can get in that kind of you know, mindset mm -hmm. and that group, the more it's like, man, we got a good group of guys, or a good group of people here. You know, it's, it's funny you say that because I didn't think about it until pretty much right now. I didn't realize how many people were already on TRT yes. until after I reached out and was like, hey, man, this is what I'm yeah. going through. And then it made me think. I was like, man, if all I would do was just talk about it. Maybe, so, you know, because I didn't know. Nobody yep. wants to talk about it. Nobody nope. wants to say that. So, actually, this even this podcast was kind of vulnerable because this is the very first time that, like, everybody's gonna know mm -hmm. you know this is what i went through yeah. but i mean if this helps another dude go get his levels checked and he's cool then he right. tells his buddy great that's, that's what awesome. i mean and, and that's all it is like it, it's it's the awareness with it um it's also you know i don't like when you say the word juice like i i just cause it, it's not because that's what people do think like it is juice like oh you're on steroids I, it's it's I a like difference it it makes it no i know f f it makes it less Doctor, yes. when you say no, TRT. I know, but but whenever, but it also, you know, you're also not running like a steroid yeah, cycle. Yeah, hundred. You know what I mean? No, like, there's a difference between like whenever people think, oh, well, that's steroids. Okay, you're not running a what a bodybuilder's running when they're running like a thousand milligrams of test a week. No, you know, no, to get their levels to like a thousand or like two thousand. You know, a, a, a score of like or a number of like two thousand. Like yeah. you're not doing that. You're getting to healthy numbers yeah like I, I take you know a lot of these guys that'll really they go too far you know they have to take all different kinds of stuff to pull back Correct. they build too much estrogen so then they're yes. on anadrol you know they're on everything else mm -hmm. i don't take anything no. else nothing the only thing i take is just my test exactly what the yep. doctor tells me yep and that's it yep and that's a big deal and like on my end you know because again Anybody who is, you know, wanting to still have kids and fertility is a big deal for them. You know, TRT is usually not the best no. option because no. it shuts your systems down. Mm -hmm. um, but there is other things out there that you can do um, that is honestly probably recommended that you do do before Try you first, go yes. um, to the full TRT. And that's where like HCG and enclomiphene, it really mm -hmm. works well for me. Um, and I know it's worked well for other guys as well. Um, and that keeps you fertile. Like that keeps you where you can still have kids and, and you're not shutting your natural system That is down. something I didn't touch on whenever you asked all the So in between me mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that talking like? to my wife and that whole deal before I did TRT, I did go on clone. clone okay. And it helped. You know, like you could tell it, it's an estrogen blocker. Yep. It does what it's supposed mm -hmm. to do. You could tell. But 
my levels were depleting so fast right. it just it wasn't doing wasn't it enough, enough. but yep. for like for a, you know a guy like you with mm-hmm. good levels but you're trying to get it to a point where you know you want to have kids or whatever yep. man, or, that that, too, yeah. or whatever you're trying to do yep. that's where i would start Correct. before you went you know i would go just change of you know outlook on life Try to eat better and lift. If that doesn't work, maybe go to a supplement that's natural. If that doesn't work, yep. you know, try this and just run down the list before you just yeah. jump into the big stuff. Yeah, no, and I agree with that. Um, okay, here's a question that I have for you. So how do you go about, like, what do you think is the best way about going and asking if someone is okay? Like reaching out. You know, like we're, we've all heard like, well, you know, because like sometimes we just don't know how to approach that. I think it's situational. Like you're gonna have to know who you're talking to. So like if I've got a buddy that he, res- I know him and he responds to you being brash, mm-hmm. I'll call him and be like, hey man, what's going on? Cause you know, you know, sometimes I've even heard of people, like your wives may reach out to close buddies and be like, hey, you know, our, our, our guy's really struggling. And yeah. you know, at that point, you just have to know who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. Some people, Like I said, they're going to want that brash approach. You know, what's going on? What's wrong with you? Come on, man, quit, you know, what it is. And other people, you're going to kind of have to draw it out of them, you know. But I don't think it's going to be one of those things where it's it's kind of a roll of the dice because they're going to be receptive. But the biggest thing I would say is if they're not receptive Mm -hmm. and they're really, really angry about it, just step back because you getting upset with them, you get you're just gonna you're gonna push them so far away you'll never help them. Yep. So if you you're like, hey man, with that. yeah, if you're just like, hey man, I get it. If you're not, if there's nothing wrong, don't worry. But I'm here if there is, or if there is something wrong, you don't want to talk about it. I'm here when you're ready. And then yep. you just you you got to step back because sometimes people need. A lot of people don't know that they have that. Mm-hmm. So when you tell them, they may go home and think about it. They may yeah. sit on it for a day or two, and then they're like, you know, what, man, he reached out, so I'm yeah. gonna reach out. No, and that's a good point. I mean, like. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I've always thought like you know anybody can always come and talk to me personally. Like I've always thought that, but you know it's not something you ever t- say out loud. Mm-hmm. You know, and you might think you're approachable, but I never knew that. You know, you were I. I don't know. I just never knew like that I could probably reach out. Like, yeah, I think I could honestly like, with us not even hanging out. I, I think I could call you and actually mm-hmm. you would you would help me with whatever I need. Yeah, and that is just a thing that I've just felt like I've. I've noticed that, mm-hmm. you know, over, and you never really said that out loud, but now saying it, of course, like it just kind of feels like, okay, like that, that thought was correct. Yeah. To anybody that, you know, after me going through all my stuff, if anybody that I even kind of know, like if yeah. I kind of know, if we're friends on Facebook, if yeah. we, you know, you got my number, you go through something, call me. Cause I'll be the one person I won't tell nobody, correct. you know, I'll point you in any direction that I know. And if I can't help you, I, you know, I'll point you to somebody who I think can, mm-hmm. Um, but just if you just need somebody you want to call and just be like, hey, man, yeah. and just start going, just start talking. I, yeah. I'll, I'll set my phone down and just listen to what you got because sometimes that's all they need. Mm-hmm. They just need to get it out there. And then you're like, okay, man, well, now this is where we need to go from here. Yeah. You know, this will help or it won't or whatever. But just having that, you know, that support system all the way around you. You know, if I can't talk to my wife, I can talk to this buddy mm-hmm. or I can, you know, talk to my dad or, you know, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to reach to. That's yeah. having that system is the best. Okay. Cool, man. Well, we've been right at an hour. Anything else you want to add on to this? No, man. I feel like this has been good. You could break this into three episodes. I know if you we could. We could go into a bunch. <laughs> That's why I told you, dude. An hour goes fast. We've been doing it for yeah, an hour. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. Well, dude, I appreciate you coming on. I feel like this has been yeah, a good man, talk. Been we'll have to do this again. Um, in my opinion, I think we could. Uh, I think it'd be cool to do it in June and have yeah, like instead of just us, have four or five yeah, guys. Yeah, let's try to know? get that. Let's try because yeah, like, we can have three or four people in here and we can all kind of piggyback off each other. I think it's a good idea. Let's do or, that in June. Yeah, th- three different types of people, three yeah. different walks of life. I was going to say, we all have different uh, role or different uh, different things we all go <laughs> through, different struggles. Um, but I think this is a good good opening one up. So thanks for thanks for having me on. Dude, man. thanks for being vulnerable. Great. Thanks for doing this. Um, I enjoyed it. It's been so. good, man. I appreciate it. All right, brother.